I'm getting ready for a Texas hunt. I'm switching from regular Knox to lighted Knox. I wanna talk about the ramifications. Then I'm gonna be tinkering through a several different broadhead options. I wanna show you kind of my little broadhead collection. Talk about each one. Maybe I'll show you a broadhead you've never seen before. Plus we gotta figure out what Black Ova sent us inside this box. And I'm gonna repair a couple fletches on my veins cause Jake's been slapping my arrows with his and putting holes in my veins. Come along, this is full on ABT. <laughs> I have a discount code with Black Ovis. Elk Shape will get you 10% off. Black Ovis is where I get most of my backcountry stuff. And yes, I've used my own discount code because it's awesome. So get your gear ahead of time so that you get it, supply chain issues, and get your gear ahead of time because who knows, the price could go up, inflation. Get your gear ahead of time because you need to test, tinker, vet it before you head into the field. This is a buck knife, this is my everyday carry. Thorn. Broadheads, expandables, we'll geek out on that. A last chance, pro scale from last chance archery. I know I have one, but two is one. Sorry, Jake, you're not getting that one. We're gonna use that anyways. I need to weigh all these broadheads and inspect what we expect. Little gloves, little shooter gloves with the little hands cut off, that could be nice. Food. Pinnacle foods, jalapeno cheddar biscuits, Sausage gravy, uh, I, yeah, Black Ovis, send me lots of food because I'll just bankroll that. And then we got Thorn Practice Pack. I'm sure that'll be for putting on those expandables. And a Black Ovis Alpine Carbon Fiber. Jake, you're gonna get this one because I definitely already have this one. We won't tell Black Ovis. If you keep watching this video, I have so many broadheads that I need to get rid of a few. So maybe we'll figure out a way to send you, the subscribers, the people we love, Dan's leftover brand new broadheads, which is not a bad thing. Let's talk about arrows. Everyone likes to talk about arrows. If you haven't watched the video, I shot this wide versus the Tooth of the Arrow XL four blade. Uh, I like that design on the four blade. I thought it was pretty good. I thought it flew pretty good. If I were to consider using it, I would probably do further testing. It seemed like it planed down at 60, whereas this wide flew better, but this wide I thought was lo uh, loud. I did call Iron Will Bill and I did get my single bevels to the left ordered. They're not here, but they're gonna be here Monday. That's what I'm using for Alaska, for sure. Uh, and the reason why is because I used the bevel to the right last year on a bear and the damage internally was incredible. We talked about that in the last video, but imagine a broadhead just not, just continually spinning through, creating trauma. That, that single bevel, only one side's cut. I think it's at a 32, 32 degree angle and it's just that's awesome. Now entry exit holes on the single bevels. I still think all, I think iron wheels still entry holes are okay. That's why I was wanting to shoot this because I saw what the hole did on Brandon McDonald's bear. With that being said, I still think bears are not tough and you got to put big holes in them. And I think damage wise, a single bevel will probably do the most damage internally which means the bear hopefully won't go far. In fact, hopefully it goes down on camera and Tim Connor, you better hit record. We're super excited about that hunt, but I have a hunt coming up before that. I'm going to Texas and I'm going down to chase Axis, Mouflon, Audad, yeah, yeah, Audad. See, I don't even know, that's the thing about Texas, I don't even know what I'm hunting. It's a private ranch, it's not high fence. Uh, and then everyone that I'm going with is taking a rifle and all the guys are ribbing me because I'm not shooting one with a rifle. I'm going bow hunting or bust. And so I'm trying to figure out what to take with me to Texas before we go to Alaska. So again, Alaska, we're gonna do the single bevel to the left from Iron Wheel 125. It'll be a solid and it'll be a home run. I'm gonna keep one wide in my quiver. If I realize that I'm getting like under 30 yards on a bear and I will switch out to this. I'll have this in my back. I'll just pull it, knock it. They're just a little loud. People will tell you that bears don't jump the string and I don't necessarily disagree, but I'm just a paranoid bow hunter and I want things as quiet as possible. Uh, what I did here is I switched to a lighted knock. Here's why. Idaho just made it legal to use lighted knocks. Idaho has been my primary state that I hunt for 20 years. And so I've always just kind of had to have two different setups, one for non Idaho states. And then I'd always have setups with regular knocks. Well, now that I can use lighted knocks, why not start practicing them with now? The reason why I talk about lighted knocks is there's a reason why I don't like to run uh, a wrap on the back. It is extra weight. It's not that heavy, but when you're talking, this lighted knock weighs 12 grains more 
than my AEE knock. And so that's, I mean, that's putting weight on the wrong end of the arrow, if you will. Uh, it's not a huge deal. It probably will affect my sight tape a little, and that's okay. We're gonna tinker with that the next couple days before I head to Texas, but I do want lighted knocks. Now it's legal in all 48 states, lower 48 states. I'm pretty much gonna use these. Now these are from, these are nocturnals. Yeah, so these are, I think these are strobing ones. Not a huge fan of the strobing ones uh, for video, for filming. It's better if it's just a constant green, but these are the red green strobing ones. And then when you buy a package, it comes with your HS GT or your standard X knock. So X fits the 204, that's what this is. Inside diameter is 0.204. If you run four millimeter shafts, you're probably at 0.166 or 0.165. And then you can adjust uh, these, are, I do sell these on my website. Uh, I like the Nocturnals and they have a little button in here that you can switch. They got new ones out that the, you can switch with by hand. You just take your everyday carry and you just stick it in that little notch and flick it up, it turns them off. That's really all I have to say about arrows. I did repair a few fletches, and all that is is where you got your friend Jake, and he aims for my arrow every time because my arrows are always in like the best spot of the target, and uh, I'm joking. But anyways, yeah, so Jake's nicked. I've nicked my own arrows, and I put holes in a lot of these veins, and if you guys don't helical, you don't have to worry about as much, but if you helical and you shoot a tight group, a lot of times you'll nick your veins. There's a lot of area there for them to hit. And so all I do is I'll just scrape off. I'll peel this one off with a scraper. I'll clean the shaft real well with some acetone. And then I'll just put it in the jig. So easy to repair. And I always make my cock vein a different color. So yellow, yellow, blue, blue, is lined up and these rip TKOs come spinal line. So this is the stiffest side of the arrow. I want all my arrows to have similar flight characteristics. So I try to do everything in my power to make sure these arrows are as identical as possible. And so that's, that's kind of a tinkering hack is flight characteristics, get your arrows to match as close as they can, how they weigh, vein configuration, how much weight, their straightness, their tolerance, all that kind of stuff. And we're gonna do more videos on arrows down the road. I basically spin tested every arrow these are all the arrows i have to choose from i only had one arrow not cut the mustard and it's this arrow and this arrow looks really good but when i spin tested it it was the only one out of the 12 that i could see noticeable wobble now it didn't wobble terribly in the arrow spinner but it's just there was significant wobble at the ends this arrow is probably not as straight as the rest and so i pulled it out i'm batching out my best arrows to go hunt with so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through all these broadheads that I have at my house. I'm gonna see if I can figure out which ones I can give to, away to you subscribers. And I wanna wait and separate them between the 125s and the 100s and briefly talk about each broadhead. And then we're gonna go over the Black Ova stuff. Let's go. One thing I do on all my hunts is I bring this little kit with me. In here is an extra range finder battery. I also keep an extra range finder battery in my pack. Different lights for different sites, depending on what's legal. A whole host of different Allens. These are just extra lighted knocks for four millimeter shafts. More different Allens and whatnot. Some impact collars from Iron Will. The AEE knocks that come standard with ripped TKOs. Different bolts for the mods on the cross centric cams from Matthews. Some different stabilizer weights. All a bunch of arrow components, brass knock, extra peeps, a whole bunch of stuff. And I keep this in my truck. And then I also have an archery repair kit that I'll bring. We've done videos on the past. We'll do more videos on that going forward. But get yourself something like this that you can kind of organize all your stuff and take with you on the road because you just never know. Murphy's Law, man, Murphy is a bastard. Uh, one of the things I wanted to show you guys was this guy right here. It's kind of a, a half cert. Most of this goes inside the shaft. It doesn't break off. It's a Trad 600 from Gold Tip, even though it's on a Victory Arrow. I've found these steel to be the best, and they're made of steel, they're not titanium. I told Iron Will Bill to make titanium ones, but there's patents and stuff, and that's something he'll have to figure out. But this is what I put inside my arrows. That weighs 75 grains, and it's a lot of weight up front that I like, and then I go 125, so I always have 200 grains up front, giving my front of center right around 16%. 15 or 16 is kind of the sweet spot for me. Glue wise, I just put glue right here, beads of glue right here, and I just use like some sort of super glue or you could use epoxy. And I've never had them come out. And uh, I sell them on my website if you guys wanna get these. And I just find them to fit the best. 
for 204 diameter arrows. There's just no bump right there. They pull out real easy and they're tough. I like steel, that's good. And that's what I'm running for componentry on these arrows. When you look at these broadheads that we got here, we're just gonna run through them and weigh them and separate them out because I'm interested in 125s. This is that last chance scale. This is an annihilator. So it's 127 grains is what I'm getting. Um, they're not as sharp out of the box, but I still haven't killed anything with one of these and I still would like to. So there's that. This is your standard non-XL and this weighs 125.6. This is the wide. They make him one in 150 and it weighs 124.7. That's from Iron Will. This is that tooth of the arrow four blade, 125. It looks like it's all solid one piece and it is vented. It looks really well built and they do fly, as far as I could tell, they fly pretty well. So there's four broadhead options. This is a VPA. It weighs 128.9. These are all supposed to weigh 125, but that's why we're checking the differences to see what they weigh. As far as the design goes, it's a three blade. Got that pretty long three to one type ratio you would wanna look for on broadheads. These flew really like exceptionally well for me. I almost used these last year. This is the Grim Reaper Micro Hades three blade, 125. This is what I've killed most of my animals with and I've been super impressed with them. Probably run these on elk next year. They just fly the best for me out of everything that I've shot. And they're super sharp and they're made in America. This is an iron wheel solid. So it's just a two blade with bleeders, 124.2. This is from Evolution. Look at this sucker. I, I almost use this is because it's a fixed, but it's got crazy cutting diameter and angles. It's just a cool design how they're like completely perpendicular to each other. So you got these two blades here and then these bigger blades that are perpendicular. Um, these flew really well for me, 127.6. This is a slick trick, three blade, it's one piece, pretty similar angle to the tooth of the arrow, and that's a hundred grainer. So we're gonna put that down there. Now these are something that are very interesting to me. So a 2.8 inch total cut, this is a, basically a four blade, and this is from Grim Reaper, and it's a hybrid piece. So this is what I shot that this dude with. I don't know if you, can you guys see that guy? We'll, we'll pan up. I shot him, there is a video. I'll link it over there. But this this buck, I shot pretty far, like pretty quartering away. It went in through the guts, hit the liver, opposite lung, came out right, in front, right behind the, the opposite shoulder. Blood wise, I got very little blood, which was surprising. But when you go in through the guts first and out, you know, you're not gonna see as much blood. He did bleed a little bit more after the first 50 yards, and it was just out that left side where the arrow exited, but I got a huge hole in him. I wasn't like overly impressed where I was like, oh, I love these. But the reason why I took these down to Texas is I was thinking about shooting elk with these. My buddy, John Barklow over there at Sitka, he uses these on elk. But if I had to go head to head between these two, I'm gonna go with the Micro Hades three blade. It's, it puts a triangle hole through the animal. Whereas this one, I didn't quite see the triangle and I'm not sure why, but I, again, I just, from my test on does, I think I shot four does with this and, and this buck. I'm gonna go with this over that, but I, I never really did a good job on that video reviewing the actual broadhead, so that's what I'm doing now. This is their mechanical. You can see how it's going to go in. As soon as it hits the hide, it's going to open up, whereas like a, um, the Rage do the opposite. They open that way. I don't like that. That slip cam stuff or whatever it's called, I, I think this is the only way, if you're gonna shoot an expandable, I think this is the way to go. And my buddy, Matt Bateman of Grim Reapers, has killed a lot of elk with this and he's sold on it. I just uh, am not. I'm gonna stick with fixed on elk, but uh, if you were gonna do an expandable, this is what I would go for. So Evolution Outdoors makes an expandable. And when I shot my target with this, I did it once, pulled it out, and I'm like, dude, never again am I shooting my target with these because it ripped such a big hole in my 365 target. But it looks like this and it's really sharp and the angle is nuts. So you kind of have, if you were gonna compare these to each other, the one on the right is chisel tipped, which I think is really important to have that kind of a chisel tip in case you do hit bone. Uh, this does not have a chisel tip. You can see you got three blades deployed here, whereas this one, this is gonna do your cutting 
to get through the hide and then this should open up and it's gonna leave pretty good hole. I darn near, I mean, I still wanna, I might, I might take this to Texas just because they do fly really well and they were destroying my targets that uh, I think they can do a lot of damage. And last but not least, brand new six pack of iron wheels. What are these weigh? Of 125 solids. These are the six pack of wides, 125s. I'm gonna be stingy on those. I think these are 100 solids. I'm gonna give these away. Basically, if you buy anything at oakshape.com between the time of this video and the end of May, I'm gonna put this in your order. So you're just gonna get a, somebody is gonna get a surprise package of iron wheel solid. Uh, and I mean, that's if you buy anything off my, not like workout programs, but if you buy a hat or a shirt or a hoodie or some sort of archery gear, I'm just gonna throw this in the order. Somebody's gonna get that. These tooth of the arrows are awesome. They're solid 125s. I'm gonna give these away. I'm gonna throw these in somebody's order as well. So hopefully you like 125s. And this one I shot through a target on video three shots. So I would consider it still good to go. I'm gonna put that in there. Um, as far as the broadhead tightener, I threw that away. So you're not gonna, you're literally just gonna get this package. So I'll give that to one of our subs because we love you. Again, you gotta just buy something from Elk Shape and somebody by the end of May, I'll have sent all these out. Then we got these standard 100 grains. This is a slick trick. I've killed a bull with slick tricks and they didn't look like that. So they made a new chisel tip design. It actually looks super close to the Micro Hades 4 blade. Um, so I'm gonna give that one away as well. So somebody's gonna make an order. They're gonna get a, pack, a six pack of iron wheels. Someone's gonna make an order. They're gonna get a three pack of Tooth of the Air 125. Someone's gonna make an order. I'm gonna get uh, a three pack of those slick tricks. So then Black Ovis just started selling these. These guys are very much into tinkering as well. And they sent us these Thorn Broadheads. So they look pretty insane. Fill point accuracy, which, you know, what expandable isn't? These are something you can get off blackovis.com. I haven't tested them, but this is what they look like when they, when you, they leave your arrow. And hopefully this is what they look like. Looks like two giant razor blades cutting into the animal. I'm gonna go ahead and give both of these away as well. Actually, that's a lie. Which one do I wanna shoot a turkey with? This says 2.2 inches of cut. This one says two inches. So I'm gonna shoot a Washington State turkey with this one. And I'm gonna give this one away in somebody's order. This scale right here is one we were using to measure all our stuff. They come with this so that you can put the arrow in there and weigh the total arrow weight and we should probably get a new arrow weight since I decided to add 12 additional grains to the back of my arrow. So we did weigh 448, now we're at 463.9. So we're, we're 463 total weight. We got our spine alignment right here. If you guys can see that, this is my cock vein. So I'm gonna make sure that I put this in a very specific way. Fits like a glove. I didn't have to use any of the universal adapters. The X works with the 204. HS3 scale, I have one and now I have two. So that's kind of cool. I'm gonna show you how to use that real quick. And then finally, we got these black Ovis branded wool gloves. They're fingerless. And that'll come in handy if you're doing anything in the outdoors in the fall. So let's show you guys how to use this. I recommend doing it a couple of times. It says 62.9 is the peak and the holding weight is 12.9. Let's do it one more time. Sixty two point five peak weight and twelve point five holding weight. Super handy when you want to test your bow and do all that kind of tinkering and whatnot. All right, last but not least, the best thing in that box was this tripod. And this is the Alpine Pro from Black Ovis. It's Black Ovis branded. The thing I like about this is it weighs two pounds. So you open that up and now it gives you this and it extends out further, which is great for when you have a big giant 65 vortex millimeter spotter on there. The nice thing is that Jake and I are gonna be running the same tripod, so we'll be able to have a DSLR camera here, spotting scopes, we can swap things out. So we're gonna save a ton of weight. It folds up nice and neat. It's a double pan. So I'll put this on the ground. So you put whatever you want on there, fits like a glove, lock it in place, loosen to move up and down. If you don't want it to move up and down, just tighten it. 
And if you still want to be able to pan left or right, crack this. It's got this indicator. It's a very smooth operator. You can lower this bracket down, just turn to the right adjustment you want. You basically need a tripod like this that's ultra light that you can basically tilt and you can fold it up. So these two go in the cylinder of my backpack on the side. This sticks out and it kind of helps keep it in place. This is folded down. It weighs two pounds. This is an awesome setup from Black Ovis. This was probably my favorite thing in the entire box. And I already had it, so I'm giving this other one to Jake. And that's just the perks of being the cameraman. <laughs> All right, guys, hopefully you learned a little bit behind the scenes of my tinkering style. Again, here's how you're going to get some broadheads. Consider me your broadhead daddy. Uh, if you make a purchase on elkshape.com between now and May 31st, 2022, I'm going to slip some of this stuff into packages at random. So again, a six pack iron wheel, solid 125 with bleeders. One, two, three, four, five, and six, seven. I'm gonna include an extra broadhead from Grim Reaper Micro Hades Free Blade. This is what I use, 100 grains. Four blade from Slick Trick, standard SS, 100 grains. The all new SS3 from Slick Trick as well, 100 grain. Some 125 thorns. And Tooth of the Arrow 125s with one being shot through one of my targets three times, that's it. We'll throw that in there. So a lot of orders are going to get some broadheads again through May 31st. Just our way of giving back to you guys. We do this for you. We appreciate you guys. We'll catch you on the next one.